right, so we're gonna be creating, we've created the blog already, but I'm, I'm gonna kind of walk you through my thinking on this. So we're gonna be creating, this is a comparison tool. And so we're gonna be creating a different page, landing page for each of the following landing pages could be mean a few things, but in this case, I, I know what they're referring to. So we're gonna be creating a separate page for each of these companies. So there's a review and comparison. Now, two things I gotta consider as I'm, I'm doing this is number one, what is the best format? Because you could either do it in a blog format or a portfolio format, which we'll take a look at right now. And then the other thing I need to consider is, well, if we're gonna be designing a page that looks fairly similar again and again, say it has like five sections built out on the page, what we wanna do is we wanna create the first one and get it right and create all the sections and get it exactly how we want it. And then from there, we'll just copy it to create the new ones. The big reason that is important is because if you decide that in the process, for example, you create the 15 pages first, and then you're gonna design them, well, it'll be a lot more work in the long end because if you create five or six sections on one page and it has custom code or all these special blocks or whatever, you have to then create it again and again and again. So rather than doing that, I'm gonna create one, do it as well as we possibly can, get approval from the client first before we create more pages. And potentially in this case, they may be creating the additional pages, but then I'll be creating the first one that's perfect, beautiful, simple, whatever they need. And then from there, I will teach them how to duplicate it, make sure the URL is formatted properly, and then they could go in there and edit the content for every single page. So that's the second point. The first point, if we go back here, there's two ways you can build some type of resource like this. Now, right now you'll see this little pen here signifies a blog. Well, when I click on this, it'll have these posts within it. And the reason that's important is we're looking at the URL structure. So whatever the URL is, it's gonna to go to forward slash builders and then forward slash the company. So now they're all within this like sub section, this home of the website. So this is one thing to consider. You would use a blog over a portfolio if you want comments. So if you want all these separate pages to have comments, then you would want to use a blog. Another consideration is what you want for the homepage for the blog or portfolio build. So let me click on portfolio. I'm gonna just create one and I'm gonna call it uh, builders. Okay. All right. So you see here, there are projects in here. Again, now we're in here. This is a subdomain of the entire process. So what are the main differences? Well, you'll see here that there's one option that's missing. I'm gonna show you where it exists in blogs. But what's interesting about this page is you'll see here, it says project one, two, three. This gives you a few design. At this point, it's design differences that you have. So here you'll see project one. When you click on it, it takes you into the project. This page can be formatted however you like. The blog page technically can too. The only difference is with the blog page, you have to have a title at the top. So right here, there's no title for the page. If I go back here and I go into the actual blog, you'll see when I actually click on the blog post, you see this, like you could adjust the text here and all this information, but overall the title will always be at the top. And also you're following a format that is limiting in some ways. So it really does depend on what kind of content is gonna be on the page. If we go back to the portfolio, design and setup, you'll see if I click into one of these, you'll see that out of nowhere, basically almost a full bleed image comes in line. There's a bit of a gallery here. You can see there's an image up here as a header. There's a gallery here. Okay, so they have this. So you wouldn't be able to do this fully in a portfolio. And what I mean is, like, let me click into this. And what I'm gonna do is, you wanna be able to add sections. That's a big thing. Like you can't have sections. So a portfolio is much better if you wanna have sections. So here, if I want text that say, for example, fills the screen, let me do this. I, I would never format text like this, but if I want text to like fill a section or go across a page, or even have a section that is, for example, a dark background like this, you wouldn't be able to just do that within a blog post. The blog post formatting is just gonna be much different than this. What it does do, and I, I just mentioned this a moment ago, if I go to settings, you'll see there's this, there's feeds, which actually is nice. 
And then with advanced, there's page head code injection, there's the tags, there's the categories. You're not gonna have tags and categories. I don't believe so. Correct me in the comments below, but you're not gonna have tags and categories if, if you do this in the portfolio. So in this case, there's one major thing I'm missing information wise from the client that could adjust this completely, but I'll tell you how I think about this. So the one thing I'm missing from the client is I don't know exactly what content is gonna be on the page. I don't know if they're gonna to wanna to have graphs on the page, graphics, images, or like a load of images or one image. One image, it'd be fine on a blog post. 20 images might not be fine on a blog post. Could work, but might not be the best best use case scenario. I don't know what other additional formatting they want. With a blog, say for example, I edit this blog here and say I change the width, content width is narrow, say I do wide. I would not suggest this for a blog post. That is so difficult to read, <laughs> oh gosh. I can't even look at it for a long time. All right, so let's just do, say I do wide. Well, if I change it on one blog post, I change it on all blog posts. Portfolio is completely different. There are separate pages within the portfolio, so they operate differently. The main thing I need to consider at this point, outside of not knowing what the content is, is how would the client like to organize these pages? Because say, for example, like I was looking at this earlier, this is a, a website comparison tool, you can say. And so when I'm taking a look here, You'll see they have best website builders, free website builders for small businesses, cheap portfolio, photography. These are definitely based on SEO stuff. Okay, so this is Nerd Wallet. This is what they do professionally is they compare everything. So if I go here, it says our top picks. So oops, if I hover over it, you'll see best credit cards. And then in here, best credit cards, best reward cards. And so if I click on reward cards, I don't think they're doing this individually where they're saying this is the best reward card. And then under that, put this one and then under that, maybe some of them. But what I would imagine is they're using some form of categories and tagging. So ones with best balance transfers. Well, if they add a new credit card into their system and it rates well for balance transfers, it would automatically get taken to this section or this page. So this is a bit of a limitation in Squarespace that isn't the most, it doesn't become the most robust. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna build both because there is some missing information. And so I'm gonna show it to the client, show them what examples look like and see what they say. There's also a comparison table that we're going to be creating from scratch, coding it and getting it all formatted for them. So with that in mind, there is going to be a bit of complexity added that may be simple to copy and paste into other parts of the website. This process is a little bit of a back and forth, but I already have the initial phase started because I've already built both of them. and. Before we launch it, we'll decide on which one so I could format the URLs properly. And, and then we'll go from there. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna change that. And then I'm gonna go down here and change that. And so that will be our structure, at least initially. And then we'll go from there. So we're gonna start building these out and see what the best feel, look, all of that is. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below if you have any additional questions. We make videos every single week. And so if you have a question below and we could help answer it, we may have a video response for you just in about a week here. So please leave your comments below. We would love to hear from you. And if this video was useful to you, please hit that like button. For more content like this, subscribe. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.